My friend, it has been some time. A lot of things have happened since the last time we sat down together in New York City. How are you? I'm doing great, Jason. Thanks for having me. Boy, what a difference about a year makes. I was looking back. I was looking back at my calendar the last time we talked, and, and sadly, it was about a year ago. And we were in the process of celebrating our hundred-year anniversary um, as a company. Um, that's quite a milestone. We we were celebrating it in in great fashion, in the sense that the company was performing at the absolute highest levels in its history. We were growing faster than we ever had, innovating more than we ever had. We have you know been recognized as the number one great place to work in the United States, the number two great place to work in the world. Um, and in so many ways, um, riding high uh, in that time frame, and frankly, up until probably the, the early part of March. Um, but it's a very different world, yeah. um, as, as, uh, as is depicted by the fact that um, I'm on audio and not sitting in the studio like I was a year ago with you. Yeah. So uh, I, ha I hate that part, particularly as somebody that's in the business of movement and travel. But uh, this this is our life at the moment. But, yeah, it's a uh, it's been an, an interesting few months for sure. Interesting to say the least, Chris. Last, you know, three months and also last almost three weeks here. And we want to talk about the state of the hotel industry and how you see it. Got to ask you about leadership, though, amid what's happened in uh, Minneapolis, um, the protests against racism. You know, we keep hearing we've got to have leaders step up, money talks, and whether, you know, who you work with in terms of your supply chain, who you give internships to, you know, that's how you make a difference. That's how you make, you know, you kind of move the conversation and actually move what's happening in our society. i got to get you to weigh in on this. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Carol, and thanks, and ni nice to talk with you. I wish I could see you. Um, I'm saddened by everything that's going on, and this is something that, as you can imagine, in, a, in an industry and in a company that is incredibly diverse, this is, this is a huge issue. This is, diversity is not a new thing for us. You know, we've been focused in, in this area for a long, long time and, and been recognized for it. We're number two diversity Inc. Um, ranking in the United States for, for diversity. Um, but the reality is, um, as is depicted by what's going on, you know, right here in my hometown of Washington, you know, I could literally hear the protests going on from my house and explaining to my children, uh, two of whom, both in New York and Washington, ended up in the march, you know, to, to support their black friends uh, in, the, in this process. This is a sad day for America, and I think we've had many of these sad, sad days uh, over the years and in, and in recent years, and I think to your to your point in the question, it's high time we do something about it, that we not just talk about it, but that we act upon it. Uh, and that means that collectively, as a society and as a country, as we think about uh, reform, we need to think about this and we need to do something about it, including the criminal justice system. And that means each and every one of us um, that, has, that, that are leaders across a broad range of industries, we need to, even if we were, we were focused on it, and even if we were, as is the case with Hilton, recognized for it, we have to recognize we have never done enough. You know, given what is going on and what we're seeing, what is abundantly clear is there is so much more to do. And so like everything, for me and for Hilton, it's about trying to be a constructive part of the solution. And so, you know, we are very, I've been communicating like crazy with all of our team members, including uh, our black team members all around the country. The stories I've been hearing are heart-wrenching, that they're pouring their hearts out about the impact, you know, throughout their life that racism has had on them. There's obviously no place in society, no place uh, in, in, in our industry, and no place in our company for racism. And so, as a company, as much as we've been focused on it, there is so much more that we can do at all levels of our company to create more opportunities for our black team members. And that means at the very top of the ecosystem, as we think about and already were thinking about our board of directors, to the lowest levels of the company and to make sure that we're creating opportunities and a feeder system to, to develop our uh, teammates in the in the black community in a way where they can have bigger and better opportunities. And so, as I say, this is something we were focused on, okay, but I don't want to rest on our laurels and the fact that we were ranked number two. That's not good enough. 
I think for everybody, every leader, I think that the message is um, we we obviously have not done enough, and that as society, as business leaders, as political leaders, we need to use this moment to rally for change and not have it be like it has honestly been in a number of other cases in recent years where we talk, there's a burst of activity, and then we go back to, to uh, right. you know, no, back to where we were. Right. And so we're really focused. I mean, it has been, I have a call, literally, as soon as we're done with this, I have a uh, call with, with one of our team members who sent me the most heartbreaking email about her experiences in life and just asked, I would like to talk to you. You and I met once. I just want to be heard. And so, right. uh, you know, I've been doing lots and lots of, of those conversations to listen and learn. And I've encouraged all of our team, you know, take a moment, take a deep breath, like become part of the solution. And the first step in that is trying to understand it better so that we can help get to, to better, better answers.